Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another session with us. We are at the workroom again today. Uh, today we have some special guests. My name is Wing. This is Aaron. Yep. So today we are not going to be the one who's doing most of the talking. Today we have with us Dee from So Delight. She's very, very experienced in brush calligraphy, um, all kinds of calligraphy you can learn from her. But today she'll be showing us some fun stuff. She'll be showing us modern brush calligraphy, all right? So That's without right. further ado, let me let her say hi. Hi, hi everyone. Dee. Hi, hi, Wing. Hi, Erin. So good to be here. And thanks for inviting me. So, so, so excited. You can, you can tell everyone us. about yourself since uh, I think it's best you can tell everyone uh, where are you now? Uh, how long you've been doing this? Just a little bit of uh, background information. <laughs> okay, so I am D. I am the lady behind Soul Delight or Soul Delight. And I've been doing um, calligraphy, mainly calligraphy and watercolor for the last seven to eight years. So it's been, <laughs> it's been, a, it's been a long ride, but it's been really, really good. And yes, thank you so much for having me. And I'm so, so excited to be, to be writing for you guys this afternoon. And thank you everyone for joining us. Yeah, so today she'll be showing something. So you can see um, this website over there as well. So if you want to find out more about um, D, later you can go to her website link over here. Okay, so right. Delight, um, you can go and find out more about her as well. So um, today she's going to be showing us some interesting stuff. So I heard that you actually... Um, have tried many many different brands of brush markers because we are going to be using some brush markers today yes. so yeah tell us more about it yes um i've i've always because i my background is really calligraphy so not only do i use um pointed nib but i love brush markers as well and i like what wing said i've tried so many brands and spent so many money so much money you know buying all this material so um but when I've, uh, the more that I use it, I kind of like, I have my favorite thing, kind of like, oh, I really want that, the, that it has to be pigmented, that it has to be juicy, that it has to be vibrant in colors, and it has to be blendable. You know, you, you become quite demanding on what you want from your brush pens. And I'm so glad that, that, that um, markers like Kareen, um is available out there for people like me who have really um specific need <laughs> from it and and yeah so um uh all those things actually all those boxes were ticked when i discovered kareen markers even before i i i met wing and city looks um i've been using kareen markers for for a year or so already my first box i bought overseas and it was the metallic set oh, oh my god cool. yes no not no 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 discount nothing i bought the full back box <laughs> full price and and i never regretted it you know and and like i was saying it was i've had it now for probably two years or more and yes that one <laughs> thank you erin <laughs> erin can be on my workshop anytime <laughs> Yes, and the, the I love how how pigmented Karin markers are, and I'm a big um, <laughs> I'm a big big fan of blending colors. So that's why most of my calligraphy that I do with brush, I really do with watercolor because of the blendable property. And thankfully, Karin is I think the only markers that I use that can do that, that is able to blend um as smoothly as watercolor so that's very important for me and anyway like i said um the the first box of kareen markers that i bought which is two plus years ago by now they're still there it hasn't you know i haven't okay i have one here i haven't even reached halfway and you know how much i write it's still there it's still alive the bristles are the bristles are still intact it's not frayed the ink is still there it's I can 
there's still so much life left into this pen and it's it's been two years down so it's really really good so yeah i'm not just yeah. <laughs> i'm so, not just saying this so, you know i really didn't know karen marcus until one year ago maybe less than one year ago we started retailing it as well so mm. then that's when i found out more about um karen then it's actually a, a brand from poland so yes. that's um that's also really uncommon because we know most stationary products come from or, or at least the ones we think are the best come from germany or from japan yeah mm. so poland like how many of you have visited poland i don't know those who are watching if you visited poland <laughs> you can type in the comment and say you've been to poland <laughs> I think I myself have not gone to Poland. I always put it as one of the places I want to go, but I haven't gone as well. So, yeah, if you all have been to Poland, After please COVID like it as well. Yeah, <laughs> so it's quite amazing. So, yeah, and then I get to find out a bit more. And, and one of the things about current brush marker is that actually it's supposed to use right to the last drop. Yeah, so... <laughs> is that you another, haven't used your last drop yet, huh? You've been using it for more than a year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, yeah, I, I'm actually quite surprised because I like you mentioned, Wing, I've used so many brands and my first complaint is always this, the brush bristles of most of the brands I've used, they fray in less than a year. You know, so for those who do calligraphy or brush calligraphy, it's very important that our brushes stay pointed like this right it's, it's pointy but like most of the brush that i use like after a year it will go like this and this and this and it's like it's impossible to write with them so you know you spend so much money and 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 they just fray so fast it's really heartbreaking when that happens or their ink okay. runs out after a few months so and that's so good maybe you can yeah. tell us what the materials we are preparing today and yes. things like that and those of you who are ready with your own brush markers, whether Karin or other brands, you're going to learn something today. Um, you can please type in in the comments as well, say I'm ready. Um, those who are just watching, uh, you can get ready after today, be inspired so that you can also try it out yourself later on when you rewatch this um, uh, session today. All right, so I'll let um, Dean. Okay, so, you can so yeah. okay, I will switch my camera so you can see my desk. Okay, so I I know you'll get tired of my face, <laughs> so I'll switch to my desk camera. Okay, everybody can see. I hope everybody can see. If you cannot, just let me know. <laughs> okay, let me just set up the focus. So for this afternoon, we're going to be using um, Kareen markers, okay? I just want to put a disclaimer out there that I'm not, <laughs> Kareen didn't pay me to <laughs> advertise their product. Um, I am really, um, I, I really, really love the product. And um, so that's why I'm so excited to share this with you. And I hope during this session, you will not only like learn something, but also, um, what do you call this one? Give a jump start to your creativity more than anything, okay? So there will be like a few pointers that I'm going to be sharing. Okay, first off, materials. So um, you can use any, I use a thick paper here. So it's a 300 GSM um, watercolor paper. Whatever watercolor paper that you have or a thick paper that you have at home, you can use it, okay? And then, of course, um, if you have Korean markers with you, that's great. If not, it's also okay. So these are just some of the, the colors that we will be using today. Yes. <laughs> if, you, if you haven't tried Kareen markers, um, they, you can, the good thing about this is that you can buy it by, by you know, one pen at a time. You don't have to buy the whole box if you're not ready for that commitment. So you can go out, you can go out and buy just, um, Pick your favorite colors, you know, and it's available in City Lux. And I think, Wing, you're also supplying for other shops as well, right? Yep, we are. So, and for us online, so it's pretty easy. Even if you just buy one box, um, yeah, there's quite a few colors, like 12 colors. We can buy a full set, like what I think you now have holding one as uh, 72 color sets as well. Just follow the link. We've already put it inside our comments. You all can just click through and then you all can see the whole set as well. 
thank you so much. Thank you, Swings. Thank you, Silly Locks. And okay, so what we're gonna be doing today is something like this. Okay, so the the one Ooh. that you saw on Look the at on face. <laughs> <She's> like, <"Whoa." laughs> Are you excited, Erin? <laughs> okay, so the one that no, the the poster that you saw on the event, right? When you registered, that's not fake, okay? I actually wrote that, and we're gonna be writing something like that today, okay? So I hope you are as excited as I am. Okay, first off, um, before we write our whole phrase, I'm gonna show you how do you blend with markers and how do you see the difference when you write. Okay, for that, um, I pick these two colors to blend. I love blending with black. <laughs> you pick any colors and you blend it with black, you will always get like uh, such glorious combination. So for this, I am using um, black 030 pen and the magenta red. Okay. But if you don't have this, really any two colors that are contrasting each other. Contrasting meaning if you have a blue, Maybe don't pick a light blue. Yes, Erin has it as well. Okay. Yeah, she so, found a color in the box. <laughs> okay, first I'm gonna write with the magenta. Let's write the word hey. So this is just pure magenta color. And this is one of the reasons why I love Kareen. Because with just one color, you can see here, see, it's darker shade. And here it's lighter shade, all coming from the same brush, all coming from the same pen. Right. So not a lot of markers can do that. Usually when you write, it's all um, one shade, if that makes sense. So this one, it has like, it has a bit of a gradient effect. So you have different tones. That's just magenta, one shade. Okay, this is magenta. Okay, now if we move on, Erin, are you writing with me? <laughs> Good. Now, I will take my black, and this is the second, your first way of blending. You hold the black pen with one hand, and then with your writing hand, you hold, I'm holding magenta, and what I'll do is I will rub the tip of the magenta on the tip of the black pen, like this. Just coating the tip of my magenta brush. And when I write, hey, oh, look at that. Do you see that? Look how gorgeous that is. So black slowly blending with a red, with a magenta. And all you do is this. You have to repeat it multiple times though. So per, what I do is per stroke, I do this. So rub. The, the color that you want to write with, rub it on the brush tip of the other pen, and then you write. Can I can I ask you something as well, D? Yes, yes. Wouldn't you destroy the other color? Oh <laughs> no. Actually, it, it's really, really good. Um, I'll show you later how to, like, for example, the, the pigment stays on the other brush. I will show you how you can sort of erase that. So see, rub it a little bit. I really, really like how smoothly it blends. And I love to do this kind of effect in watercolor, but I don't like rub two, <laughs> two brushes together. I just like dip in different watercolor and then let it blend. Look at that. Cool. So cool, right? And all you yeah. do is rub two, <laughs> rub two tips together. Those who okay. think that's cool, you can type in in the comments and say it's pretty cool. <laughs> so this is magenta plus black version one. <laughs> okay, so um, Wing was asking earlier, won't it destroy the brush? Like for example, we were we were rubbing. Um, let me just put the cap on in my black. We were rubbing the magenta with the black tip, right? And we know black is pretty, a pretty strong color. And you can just do this. So you take um, another scratch paper, 
So see, at first you can see a little bit of the black pigment still there, but you just you just kind of like rub it on the paper until you you don't get it anymore and it's clean. I don't know if this is a <laughs> if this is the right term for it. It's almost self cleaning. Nice, right? <laughs> yeah so basically the ink from the rest of the the barrel keeps flowing out so that's why it doesn't get mixed up and if permanently yes yes so if, if you're really um concerned about that what i really do is you can do what i just did you can just get a, another piece of paper and then slowly just write on it until the second color runs out does that make sense okay yeah so now, yeah. see, I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the difference. Erin, you're so good. <laughs> I wish I could write like that at your age. Man. Erin, <laughs> I'm a late bloomer compared to you. <laughs> I hope there are moms out there, or even young kids like Erin watching this right now. Oh, this will be so fun. Okay, so you can just see the difference. Single color. And look, if you want a little bit of drama, <laughs> you get a second you get a second pen and then rub it, okay? Now, we're going to push this a little bit and we're going to add so earlier we have the black, the magenta, and now I'm going to introduce you to a new friend of mine called the Karin Blender. Okay? If you don't have a blender, um, maybe if you can get a, a watercolor brush, but don't wet it so much. Just a damp brush will do, okay? So not a lot of brands have blender. Yes, <laughs> that one. Erin, show them that yes so um not a lot of brands carry blenders um for i've tried i've tried quite a lot of blender brushes from other brands and um it's 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 not always bad but it's sometimes it's a hit and miss <laughs> okay so that's just magenta and then i want you to open the cap of your black one or your second color pen and your blender a little goes a long way and look i will start by blending on the ends from top and bottom so just dab a little of your darker pigment at the bottom see how small that is and then push it slightly upward look how it blends magic so cool right <laughs> <laughs> I didn't so, know we could do it this way. Oh. <laughs> Glad to help, Wayne. Glad to help. <laughs> it's really, really cool. A word of caution. Like I said, a small, even a small dot, like here, you just add a little bit of dot and it goes a long way. So I think a good rule of thumb is start small. Start with a few dots. And if you want to go darker, you can always add more. But don't like oh, put too much dark color here and then blend it. Well, if that's the look you're going for, then go for it. Very good. Must, the, must yeah. the strokes still be wet before you add the blend? Like maybe if you finish writing the whole sentence and it's dried up, then you decide <laughs> to blend it. Will it still work? Yes. Um, yes. Um, I don't know what it is with curry marker, but I they do dry slightly slower compared to the other to the other markers. But yes, I get what you mean. So if you're concerned about that, you can always write letter by letter. And don't forget those thin lines. Really, really cool. If you don't get this the first time, don't worry. Just get another paper and practice. And don't forget those thin lines. Really, really cool. If you don't get this the first time, don't worry. 
Just get another paper and practice. And like what Wing asked earlier, you might see if you look at the blender, like, oh, it's no longer pristine white. See? It has white, it has red, and it has black at the tip, because that's what we've been using. Yeah, mine mine just turned after I used the black. Right, but don't worry. It is also self-cleaning almost. There. Look. Use a blender. Then you push and it. sometimes if not satisfied, I will add a bit of blending as well or dark areas at the top so that there's I'm deepening the contrast, if you may call it that. And this is why you start with small amount first and blend them and then go over. So this is where a thick paper really comes in handy because um, if you're using a um, very thin paper, it might just go through. Okay, um, there is a question from Shuchi. How do you yep. clean the blender tip later? Okay, you I clean it same way I clean the magenta brush. Because if I look at it, it's like, oh, it's dirty. <laughs> and then, look, you can see the mark and just keep on doing that until, voila, invisible. It's clean again. So even though the tip looks black, it does, it's There's already nothing. clean. It's clean. Yeah. <laughs> it's clean. <laughs> pretty yeah. cool, huh? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. But if you're, okay, okay, let me just say this. If you're the type who really wants it like super clean, like visually clean, um it does stain because you're using pigment it will stain but um when you write does it affect it no because when you write and after you clean it see as you can see there's nothing here so that's how you clean a blender tip very very extremely easy okay and please don't forget to put the cap back on <laughs> because that will dry your brush so this is magenta plus black plus blender. Okay. Um, if you if you're if you don't have a Karin marker with you and you want to do this, can you do this? Um, yes and no. Because I don't know the brand of markers that you are using. There are other brands in the market that you can that is quite blendable. And if they dry out pretty fast, so you can do letter by letter, meaning you make one letter, you do the blending, you add another letter, then blend again. And that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Okay? You don't have to rush when you're writing. So that's, that's how you blend. <laughs> Any questions? See? From one... Two, three. Usually when I write, if I'm in a hurry, I do this technique because I'm just using two pens. And you can re get really dramatic results already immediately. If I want to take my time slightly, <laughs> then I do this. Did you try it, Wing, on your end? Yeah, so I'm trying to show as well because I think my effect is not... So I think I need some practice. So the first one on top, I did more of the direct brush tip blend. This is the okay. one I just tried to fill in. So first letter I used uh, black. The other one I use uh, like a dark dark blue to blend. Uh -huh. So I think my blending skill not so good. Her huh? looks not so natural. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I don't know I what think, you guys you know, are getting here. No, yes, yes, I understand. Because when I first did this technique, I also get that very harsh line. And I think that's what I see in your work. And that's okay. This is the first time you said you did. You didn't know it. You, that's how you use the blender. Um, so a tip would be gentle blending. Don't push your brush so much. Okay, um, they, the, the pen, when they created it, I, um, I really like it because there's a steady flow of pigment going out. Not too much, you know, not too less, not enough. It's really just enough. So that means you don't have to press so much to push the pigment out. Does that make sense? So just gently okay. do it. I, I mean, gently do your blending. 
Okay? Okay. The second technique, it's just two techniques I'll show you and then we will do our little calligraphy lettering or calligraphy code. Okay. Next one is how do we do, how do we write with shadows? Have you tried writing with shadows, Wing? <laughs> writing shadows. Hmm. Yes, adding shadows to your lettering. Have you tried that? Ah, um, I only do that with um, <laughs> non-blending markers. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay. Yes, definitely. That's what we're going to be using. So I'm going to change my brush. And you know what? Sometimes we ask, like, oh, what are the colors that really go well together? You can refer to the color wheel, you know, and pick two colors that are opposite each other. But honestly, the best way to know is to experiment. Randomly pick two brushes and then experiment how they go well together. Okay, so for this one, I will write using neon blue and ochre. Ochre 552. And then for the shadows, we are using warm gray number three. But really, any grayish brush will do. I apologize for my fingers. I've been writing <laughs> a lot. <and laughs> ah, all the pigments are in my hand. Yes. Show them, Erin. What do you have in your hand? Exactly. See, Erin and I have the same brushes. The ochre, the neon blue, and the warm gray. Let's do A. So while this writing as well, we have put some links inside the command box so you all can take a look if you are interested in getting the product as well. A. Let's do the blender, <laughs> the blender technique. So I'm going to see a little bit of dark and then blend. It almost has that like wet on wet technique and watercolor. It has that effect. Don't forget your thin lines. Now, where do we add our shadow? Before I answer that, I will write another A here without blending, okay? Just for the sake of demo. So, to answer where do we add our shadow, the question is, where is our light coming from? Okay, so that means, let's say, our light is coming in on from here. This is your light, your light source. Okay, so the rule is wherever your light is coming from, the shadow will fall on the opposite side. So that means if this is your straw, okay, work with me here, your shadows will fall here. Understand? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? And then on this stroke, you do that first stroke. So on this stroke, where is your shadow going to fall? On the, so if your light source is on the left, your shadows will fall on the right. So it will fall here. And then on this right side, then on this one, yeah. right side. Okay, okay. And then on this one, also right side. Okay. Okay. Nice. So these are the area that our shadows will fall because our light source is coming from the left. So using your gray brush, or in my case, I'm using my warm gray brush, my shadows will fall on the right side. Yes. Okay. Like that. So 
So when you're adding shadow to your work, you don't always have to, but just in case you want to. <laughs> so what are the benefits of adding shadow? It adds more dimension to your work. Maybe you want it to look like, you know, like almost having like a 3D effect. There. See the difference? Mm. Right? So that's how you add shadow. So that means if your light source is coming from the right, all this shaded area will be on the left. Shadows. Let me know if you're writing with me. What are your first impression and adding shadows on your work? It's it's not easy to try to lead the shadow down the length and follow the letters because I'm uh, frankly I'm not a brush calligrapher, so it's um, <laughs> not easy to follow the strokes. My strokes are not very even because like the first stroke is there, then the second one becomes like thick and thin, not like yours. Yours is very even. Oh, okay. I, I get what you mean. Yes, yes. So I think for the shadow, what you can do is start out with thinner lines because it's easier to um, maintain. But depends on your hand. If it's easier for your hand to do like um, thick lines, then maybe you do that first with your shadow. Okay? And then... I have like a little bit of tip. Nice. No, let me oh, show what your, mine looks like. Your, your so I'm going to show that. Great. See, so my gray color ends up some part touching and some part not really touching the original ah, letter. Yes. A. yes. So I that's, that's I find it challenging. I don't know whether anybody else who's following <laughs> here right now, whether they find the same challenge as I am. Especially I if you're a beginner, if I, yeah, yes. I'm not a beginner, maybe it's quite easy. I think this is what happened, um, Wing. So when you do, like, let's say, this is my first stroke, right? That's your stroke. When you add your shadow, you just follow the curve, right? But I see in yours, so you do this. And then let's say you went back and then you did this, but only did it halfway. So as you can see, this lower part is darker than the upper part. Does that make sense? So I think with your shadow, just, it doesn't have, if you cannot do it evenly, it's okay. Just continue with it. But I think it's better you don't go like up and down, up and down on the same spot. Because you will create like blotch, like patches of color that that's art, that's uneven. So like this. See, this is even color, but if you do like go over it and then stop midway and down again, so you can see this is dark and this is light. So that, if you're bothered with that, <laughs> one stroke is okay for shadow. So you don't create patches. <laughs> so you're gonna see the barrel as well. So I wanna show you what's the, look at the barrel closely as well. Why this is something interesting. Because you can see the ink. Can you see the air bubble going in around? Oops. Yeah, so Irene's better at doing product demo. <laughs> so you can see the air bubble. Then you can see the ink flowing in and out. So you can see, unlike most other brands, you can really see how much ink there is inside. And it is totally yes. full. And you can really use to the last drop. Okay. And you know it's going to dry up before you need to get a new brush pen. Yeah. <laughs> So it's quite fun. Yeah, those who are used to using a Twisby kind of what well, in fountain pen we call a demonstrator, a clear demonstrator. You can see all the ink swooshing inside. It's quite a uh, therapeutic for stationary lovers. <laughs> so I enjoy <laughs> oh, I this called. ink around as well. So let's say for example you're you've done with this and it's okay if you don't add shadows, okay? I'm just showing you things that you can add to your calligraphy, to your lettering that will make it like pop up. If not, you don't have to do this. This is not mandatory, okay? Um, when in that, when if you want to practice, so this is the way to do it. But if not, it's perfectly okay. Do something that you enjoy and not, that doesn't stress you out. And sometimes, 
struggling like you. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. At least I know I'm not alone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yay! Go Kikas! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so if you have a white pen with you, so any any white pen will do. If you don't have a white pen, if you have acrylic um paint like here, anything white that you can use to write is okay. Okay. If you don't have it, it's okay. You don't have to do it with me. I'm just gonna show you what you can do. So I will use a very, very tiny paintbrush and then I'll just wet it and then make sure it's pointy. Yep, you can stop it here. Make sure it's pointy. And then I'll get just a little bit of this. It's an acrylic paint. And then I'll just write maybe broken lines on this stroke. On the dark and the down on the thick lines then maybe some dot and then line again broken line ah. <laughs> oh you have yay we have she the found the jelly white jelly roll pen good is, yes yeah so this has the jelly roll so in case you are not into controlling Acrylic. the brush, you can use the roll. <laughs> yes, definitely. So see if I'm I'll use the jelly roll pen. Remember the hay that we wrote earlier? Mm -hmm. So see, this is the jelly roll. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a straight line. If you want to draw like Okay, for example, here we added just straight line, right? But if you want, you can make like stars like this. Just make it cross and then little dots. So it really adds little fun, fun highlights in your lettering. So see, this is how I do star. Okay, look here. If in case you want to do um, twinkling star, I do it like this. Do a straight a, a line first. Okay. After that, cross it in the middle. Okay. Okay, so far. And then from the middle here, you do another crisscross, an X. And there, you have a twinkling star. <laughs> cool. All right. If you want, if your letter is big enough, what I do sometimes is I paint flowers or I paint leaves. <laughs> Whatever you're into. So yeah, if you do it like this, imagine if you are especially um, giving a card to somebody and you don't have to write the whole message in calligraphy and just write their names like this. If And also if, if you don't feel so confident, just write their the first name, the first letter of their name, like an A or an H. And then you can decorate it. You can add your shadows. You can add your white highlights, which we did here. So for this last part of our, I'm going to be putting all the um, techniques that we learned this afternoon. I'm going to be putting them together. And we're going to create a little quotation poster, okay? something ins inspirational and something um, positive. What we need right now in the world. <laughs> okay, so for this last part, I am using um, these markers, magenta, plum, and cool gray, and the blender. Thank you, thank you, Kwan Hao. Again, if you don't have these colors, it's perfectly okay. You work with what you have. <laughs> but if you wanna, um, if you wanna try this Korean brushes, thankfully Citilux have it already. 
So I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna chit chat while <laughs> while I write. Okay. So I'm gonna write um, fear over faith. Okay. Faith over fear, you mean? Ah, faith over fear. <laughs> 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 so, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that, that was my fear talking. <laughs> so usually what I do... <laughs> Usually what I do is I do it um letter I no word for word so that my 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 letters are still somewhat wet. Now I'm just using the blender. I really like this way of blending because it's it's it looks very organic. So nice. Okay. You don't have to write this word, or if you want, you can. You don't have to write faith over fear. You can just write faith or whatever, whatever your favorite word is. You know what? When I was first starting with calligraphy, and like I was saying, what do I need to write? I just want to practice. So since I love listening to music, I just keep on writing song lyrics mm, again and again. That's also an idea, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that or I write names of food. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be drooling before I know. Okay, so I'll be all wet. <laughs> yeah. I'll do this slightly fast so that we don't run out of time or I don't bore you guys. <laughs> oh, it's okay. You can take your time. We still have quite a bit of time. <laughs> Please so, chit chat with us. We also need to take some time to follow. No, it's uh, really fast <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm like watching it at um, times three time lapse speed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people like me, I'm like still uh, trying out letter F. <laughs> so I think. Um, I guess those who haven't gone for a modern brush calligraphy workshop to even know how to write your letter A, Bs, and Cs in the brush calligraphy method, we probably need to join a workshop. Um, we usually have workshops, of course, now. Uh, although Circuit Breaker is officially over, but um, we are still not really having big classes. So what we can, what we actually did is to set up an, an online academy so that we can yeah. actually have a repository for all the workshops. So you guys can then sign up and then go through um, all these courses or workshops online. So at the comfort of your home, you can learn everything first. Then yes. if you have any questions, you guys can just either DM to us or we can, if, would you all be interested if we have a follow-up like Zoom session so that you guys can ask whatever questions you want to ask? Because I think over Facebook Live, you guys can watch, you guys can um, write comments, but probably what you all cannot do is what I'm showing to D now, have a live response and say, hey, I'm... I'm struggling. I I <laughs> not going so fast, and at least I can stop D and ask what I'm doing wrong. So I think over Zoom, at least I think previously what we did over Zoom, at least you guys can put it up against your screen and say what am I doing right or what am I doing wrong, and then we can know your progress as well. Would that be yeah. good? Yeah, I so, love that. Everything is good. <laughs> yeah, so if you think that's good, then you all can write down in the comments as well. Say that's good. Say good. Then at least we know as well that will be useful for you guys. Until the yeah. day we can come over to a workroom and meet in person again. So you can always um, do that. All right. Yes. And um, hopefully uh, we are planning to hopefully like release like what Wing said, uh, a brush calligraphy virtual class. So at least when you, when you learn from your own home, you know, you're not pressured. <laughs> you can take your own time. 
what do I normally how long are those workshops? Sorry, Wing, what? Normally, how long are one one brush calligraphy workshop or a modern calligraphy workshop? For the um in time. in yeah. person, in person it would yeah. be around two and a half to three hours. Okay. In two to three and a half hours, what do I learn? I learn how to write capital letters and all in the lower case from yes, and all the yes, and because we're gonna be using um uh brush markers, which is much more easier to handle, and um. Oh, thank you, Chi Chi, for, <laughs> for answering. She's using 300 GSM paper. Um, uh, we're gonna be using, we're gonna be not only learning the letter forms, but how do we blend and what are the other techniques that we can add to our work that will make it you know, more interesting, a little bit more fancier. And if you want, you can learn flourishing as well wow <laughs> <laughs> and no you don't have to do that <laughs> what really those andrews call i remember there's a certain name for that uh, the technical terms okay the technical term is flourish i just call them flourish. drama <laughs> <laughs> i just call them drama <laughs> I hope you're enjoying that this. Guys. <laughs> That's an that R. R. Yeah. What? The letter R. See her letter R. Erin, <laughs> if I do a class with you, will you join? Erin, <laughs> <laughs> Erin so will teach me. <laughs> she, she doesn't like the spotlight too much <laughs> she would love to join whenever we have any class she'll be like can i go and join <laughs> <laughs> so yeah paper is very important especially if you're doing what i'm doing where where you're layering colors on top of each other because like I said, it's quite pigmented, so it's a little bit wet. And then you're putting wet on top of wet, and if your paper is very thin, okay. you will destroy your paper. So use a paper that can... Use a paper that can hold the pigment while it dries. <laughs> Almost done, you guys. Almost done. So for some of you who's been asking about the paper as well, so you can test out different papers. Actually, frankly, we also try out the papers on notebooks because at least for us, because we are into journaling, so we want to learn all these skills so that eventually we can transfer it or write all these beautiful messages in our monthly spreads or daily spreads, whichever you guys are doing. So we've tested a few different papers and actually, right yeah, now. the MD paper is very good. So MD, I don't know whether you are familiar with the MD. Actually, I love this MD is paper. paper. This is not a brand new one. So let me, uh, MD paper as in here, MD paper. So we sell that on our online mm. store as well. And the good thing is MD paper is really simple and zen-like, okay? So the one I'm using now is actually um, the frame style. So this is the one that I am using. So you can see it's not 300 GSM, but you can see on the other side, there is a little bit of ghosting, but it's um, zero, zero feathering zero feathering and actually the inks look really vibrant on it as well so if you're using curry markers on a journal i strongly recommend md paper it doesn't work um, on all papers you know that yep. i use a lot of loystrom notebook as well that's my daily notebook but frankly actually i've tried um Karin on loystrom paper 
And because the current brush is so juicy, there's actually some, it's not a massive bleed through, but you can see it more obviously on the other side. I'm not too sure. Maybe later I take out my Logitech notebook and then I can show you as well how it, what I mean, so that at least you know. So many of our customers are also Logitech users, so you understand what I say. I've used the MD how... paper with Karine actually, Karine markers, and, and they work beautifully together. So right now I'm just adding shadows. Please let me know if you cannot see the shadow. <laughs> see, there's the shadow, very, very subtle. I saw earlier somebody said, I love drama on the comments. <laughs> then you can definitely, then you will definitely add flourishing on your work. Shadow is probably, adding shadow is probably, um, it would require practice, of course. But once you get the hang of it, you can do it with close eyes. Hey, I'm almost done with my shadows. There. And then lastly, I will just add little highlights. And then we're done. And like I said, I keep on saying this. I, I, I know I'm going slightly over the top with what I am doing. But it's just to show you that you can do so, so, so much more with your work. And if you only want like one layer, that's perfectly okay. Wing, are you enjoying there? <laughs> My drama doesn't look anything like yours. My drama went wrong. <laughs> I have to practice the drama. But I wanted to show as well. So I didn't do the blending. I'll just try to show this portion. So what I'm trying to say is for the Leuchtturm paper, if you can see. Ah, yes. Um, am I showing correctly? No. Where is the? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, so yes, you yes. can see there's a little bit of bleed through because the current is pretty juicy. Mm -hmm. But on the paper. MD paper, it's it works perfectly fine because it... Unless you do it super a lot of times. Yeah. Unless you do it so you don't just have to look for watercolor paper as well. So the main thing is you're going to test it out on all your different journals. It can work fine actually as well. Yeah? Yes, yes, exactly. I think uh, a, a 200 or a 180 GSM paper should be okay. If, if you cannot find, if you don't want to, you don't have to buy a watercolor paper to do that. Work with what you have. You probably have nice paper on your drawers, especially for stationers out there. Yeah, so unless you have, you're trying to make it a card to send it to your friends, or maybe you are using you can use a Trier GSM and then you can frame it up to send your friend as a gift as a little frame so that'll be pretty nice. So what um, D is doing today? Are you using A4 paper or? I'm using A4 paper. Yes. Yeah. So it's pretty nice and big. So you can see it looks pretty cool. Then you mm. can frame it up nicely and give it away nice. as a so gift. Nice. Yeah, Erin's like so nice, so it's nice. So nice. <laughs> Thank you, Erin. So you yeah, you see the few. subtle, the subtle yeah, shadow on the ribbon, the drama. <laughs> okay. And for the stars, you don't have to put stars on every single letter. You can like skip one letter and then others are more um, simple. So these are some ways. And then can you imagine you give this to somebody and they can frame this and it will last for years and years and years. So, anything so those that's two, like what um, 
Dee is doing. You can send some love or likes inside your Facebook now. Yeah, send her some love for what you are doing. So yeah, yeah. send me some love. <laughs> <laughs> I will sending you love. <laughs> Thank you, Erin. Yeah, no, no, you're not in the Korean way. Erin. Thank you so so much, and that is the end of our. I wish I could share more, but we're 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 pressed for time. But that's it. Even with this, you know, three techniques of 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 that we learned today of blending and adding shadows and highlights, we can create already beautiful um, works of art. Okay, and it will never get boring. I promise you, it will never, never get boring. And if you're just starting with calligraphy, there's one thing that I really encourage you: write one coat a day. Oh, thank you, Erin. <laughs> write one coat a day. You don't have to write a full um, paragraph, even just a short coat, one sentence coat, and that this will encourage you to continue on practicing. And art is the cheapest therapy. <laughs> that you can give yourself and yeah this is a good way to do it thank you yeah so all those who join us today here's the discount code that's three zero a three for today today's third of october so three oct third of october d d e e and a 10 okay so you get 10 percent off store wide if you use this discount code today, all right, so including all the Karim brushes that you can buy today, all right. So actually, D is also teaching other classes, including more copper plate ones, right? Maybe you can describe a little bit about that. <laughs> okay, so um, for my, if you want to get in touch and learn um, modern calligraphy, copper plate, flourishing, um, floral watercolor painting so um drop me a message or visit me on my website so it's soul delight s-o-u-l-d-e-e-l-i-g-h-t and i would be more than happy to answer your questions and more than happy to share with you thank you so much bye. for having me thank you erin thank you everyone Mwah. have a good weekend bye, bye. bye.